Hello, and today we're going to go over a couple of things about air temperature that you might not know or you thought you knew, but maybe you didn't know as much about it as you thought you did. Um, this is a really short video, so hopefully I cover everything I need to. So what is air temperature? Well, what is temperature? Temperature is the measure of average speed of the random motion of molecules that comprise a substance. A lot of people think it's like the heat, um, but no, it's actually the measure of speed um, of these. And you can see this by the colder it gets, the slower the molecules go. The hotter, the, well, the higher the temperature is, the slower the molecules, I mean, the faster the molecules are. Sorry. Okay, there are three temperature scales. Um, there's Fahrenheit. Um, water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. It boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. There's Celsius. Water freezes at 0 degrees Celsius and water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. And then there's Kelvin. Water freezes at 273 degree, 273 Kelvin and water boils at 373 Kelvin. There's no degrees on Kelvin. Um, Kelvin is typically used for science um, when you're going to have reactions that are going to be very, very cold or very, very hot. Celsius is the science industry standard. It's easier to understand. It's easier to go up and down the scale with. And then Fahrenheit is for basically the Americans um, because we like it that way. Um, but most of the time in physical geography or any science courses, you're going to be dealing in Celsius because it is a science standard um, and it is a little bit easier to understand. <clears throat> okay, so some things to know when it comes to temperature. There's daily temperature ranges, which is the difference between the highest and lowest temperature over 24 hours. Um, so you can see what the type of temperature you had in a day was. You have the average daily temperature, which is the sum of the highest and lowest temperatures of the day divided by two. Um, you have the annual temperature range, the difference between the highest and lowest monthly temperature for a place. And then you have the average annual temperature, which is the sum of the mean monthly temperatures divided by 12. Um, and then you have the um, daily temperature lag, which is the amount of time between maximum incoming energy and maximum temperature over the day. You have seasonal temperature lag, which is the amount of time between the highest incoming insulation and highest temperature on an annual basis. Um, this is kind of the same thing as daily temperature lag. Um, they are directly related this lag pattern does correspond in both of them. Next thing to cover is the thermal equator. Um, so the thermal equator is the ISO line on the isothermal map that connects all the points to the highest mean temperature. I couldn't find a map that had the ISO line already in it, unfortunately. But this map does give you the annual mean temperature and you can see a clear pattern where there's the highest mean temperatures. So you're basically looking at the equator, the thermal equator kind of being in the same area of as our equator, maybe a little bit more north. Um, but it's a very similar pattern. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching.